Hello everyone and welcome to the show. Today I'll be using AI to find out which is the strongest professor within the Pokemon franchise. Taking all 12 of the mainline professors and 4 picked from some of the spin-off games to then randomize them all into a single elimination tournament. As this contest will be separated into 4 blocks, I decided that first I would randomize each of the spin-off professors through blocks A and D to avoid a section becoming overrun by spin-off characters. After which, I turn to the wheel once more and place the remaining 12 into their brackets. And I have to say, we have some interesting matches coming up. Right out the gate, we'll have the original two professors duking it out, with the chance to have some disputes between spouses with Paldea's Professor Sada and Toro potentially facing off against each other in the quarterfinals of Block C, as well as Professor Kukui and Burnett possibly clashing things out in our semi-finals. A chance for pupil and master arises if Professor Magnolia and Sonia can make it to the semi-finals as well. And while it's anyone's guesses who our finalists will be, there is the chance that we could see tradition versus modern if Professor Rowan and Lavington make it to the finals. Now for those watching who are questioning on how these matches are even going to be possible, as we only see the teams of a handful of professors within the games, then I would highly recommend checking out my series on what each professor's Pokemon team would be, all of which will be found in the description below. Though, if you only really want to know the team of one professor, then I've labelled each video with which characters are discussed in each video. I'll be using two instances of the same AI created by Pima Iglia, where they'll receive every team and be set to battle each other over Pokemon Showdown under Gen 9's Anything Goes rules. While I wanted different professors to use different gimmicks, such as Mega Evolution or Z-Moves, the rule set wouldn't allow Dynamaxing, so to keep things simple, every contestant will only be using Terrestrialization on their final Pokemon. Pokemon will be set to their normal Terra types, and if the Pokemon is dual typed, then its Terra will be picked from one of the two. All battles will be best of three, however I will only show one of every match to simply keep things moving along. However, at the block B's and D's final battles, there will be short intermissions while I'll go into more details about how the matches went overall. I'll be using Smogon as my primary tool for building Pokemon's movesets as well as setting their stats. No teams will be making use of items, which will definitely hinder some professors but stop others from going off the rails. Some professors will also be using alternative teams, such as Professor Oak using his Let's Go team and Professor Birch using his Emerald team. All battles will have commentary presented by myself. However, if you wish to watch without hearing my voice, then look in the description once more for the non-commentary version of this video. I want to say a quick thank you to my friend Snipu for teaching me not only how to use Python, but as well as the AI program itself. And I'd also like to thank PTM for giving me some helpful advice when it came to getting the AIs to actually communicate to each other over Pokemon Showdown. If you want to see more AI Pokemon content, then I would highly recommend checking out his channel, even if it's just to pass on my thanks to him for his help. With all that said, now is the best time to leave your guesses on who you think we'll see moving ahead, or who you think we'll even see in our finals. As we now move on to the main event, starting things off with Professor Oak versus Professor Realm. And heading into our first battle with Professor Oak against Professor Realm, both will lead with their fairy types. As Togekiss gets an early crit and a flinch, however Sylveon will use Wish and even set itself up with a calm mind to get it back up to full health once that Wish is granted. Both sides just seem to be kind of stalling each other out though, and occasionally healing. Now both professors could switch into other Pokemon to attempt to deal with the threats currently on screen. Professor Oak could switch into his Raichu to deal with Togekiss's fairy type. Meanwhile Elm could switch into pretty much anyone else would probably be a better option, and he does send in Hitmontop, 
but him on top goes completely down. Never mind, maybe that was the worst option that I could have suggested to the professor, as he sends back out Togekiss, which does take a 48% hit in Hyper Voice. And it is brought down to one health, but it appears that Togekiss will just keep landing those flinches. I believe we're on five. Can we get, we can get six. It is bringing it down to 10%. And it seems that Oak now takes this chance to uh, realize that maybe Raichu would be the better option taking down Togekiss. Jinx comes out as Oak does a switch into his Arcanine. Decently taking that hit. Elm switching into Sidowoodo. Both seem to be just constantly countering each other, and Oak goes with the burn, just saving the Arcanine with that minus attack penalty that burn would bring, as Arcanine plans to heal up. Elm tries to set up self rocks as to the Widow, and he then just keeps going for that head smash, but unfortunately it's just not doing enough damage to the Arcanine to fully take it down. And it appears that Oak's strategy is to just maybe let the burn wear down the Suda Widow. He could risk switching to the Gyarados or even the Executor, but no, he just plans to stall this boy out. Elm could maybe try and switch into his Magmorta, maybe into his Ditto, but he is just choosing to keep Sudowodo out there and just letting the poor thing just slowly burn. Over and over, turn and turn again, Arcanine sets up a sunny day as Elm chooses to go for another Stealth Rock, that's a weird play, as Elm then does switch into his Magmorta. And the switch into Sylveon will lead it to faint. As he then brings out his executor, maybe that was the plan just to get a safe switch in. As Elm switches back into Sudowoodo, maybe also sacking him off into a better switch. But then he just sends back out Magmorta, Oak bringing out Arcanine to get a safe switch into the Gyarados maybe. And Magmorta goes for Focus Blast and not Thunderbolt and is taken down by Earthquake. I think that will probably seal the match for the Professor Elm. Though Jinx did manage to put Gyarados to sleep, taking it down with two Ice Beams. Taurus comes out as Elm chooses to switch into Ditto, taking on the form of said Tauros. However, taken down with two attacks, leading into him to finally go into his final pick on Jinx and being taken down with another attack, leading Professor Oak to win the first battle. And starting off into our next match, we have Professor Kukui against Professor Crane. Both starting off the battle by immediately toxicing their opponents. With Crane taking that opportunity to then switch out Cray Dilly into its Blissey, and Kukui switching out his Incineroar into Lycanroc. Both seem to just be switching back and forth until one can make an opening. Metachamp has his attack load, but it doesn't seem to matter as Metachamp gets the first KO against Kukui's Incineroar, who then brings out his bulky Snorlax to maybe take a hit. However, Crane will bring back out his Cray Dilly. Curious what the plan is here, it seems to just be to heal back up the fool. As Braviary will knock Cradilly down the half, but it just seems that Cradilly will just be here to take hits. However, that Toxic is going to catch up to it sooner or later. As Crane does realize that too and switches back into Blissey, Braviary taking this chance to fully heal itself to full health before immediately to you turning into Snorlax. However, Blissey may be seeing that chance, goes for the Thunder Wave and paralyzes the Snorlax. Now as you might have noticed, the speed of the match has increased and that is because a look behind the curtain is that sometimes professors will just decide to get caught in a bit of a loop until certain moves have been depleted. And we have been caught into one of those moments here as Snorlax will just keep attempting to body slam the Blissey and all Blissey will do is use Soft Boil until it runs out of its healing moves. Is that the wisest option we could have? Possibly not, Metachamp could come in. But maybe that's the plan, maybe he just wants to get the Snorlax down low enough that maybe someone else could come in and clean up. We do see Metachamp come out, is knocked below half by a body slam, but will take Snorlax out with a close combat. Brain taking a pretty well defining lead into this match as Cradilly is brought back out. However, Toxic will leave it at 7%. Alolan Ninetales just setting up its team to be fine in the snow. As Beriru takes out Crane's first Pokemon, Cradilly. Mawile is sent out, but that will proc Braviary's Defiant ability. But Kukui will not take that opportunity 
to make use of it and instead will swap into his Magnazone. Before then switching into his Lycanroc. Again, both professors just seem to be switching back and forth until one of them can gain tempo. Marwell's Intimidate is coming in useful there in lowering down Lycanroc's attack. As Metachamp comes out once again, can it get a third KO? It can! Taking out Alola Ninetales and freeing up possible safety in bringing in Salamence later, but with a miss and headbutt. Crane's most strongest Pokemon throughout this battle, the one that has been doing all the heavy lifting, Metachamp is taken out by Braviary's Brave Bird. Marwell comes in and is knocked to 13%. The snow continues to fall as Braviary just decides to heal. However, this does give Marwile a chance to use Toxic. Failing the Sucker Punch because Braviary decided to heal up that 12% as Crane finally brings in the Salamence. Who is using this repetitive healing as a chance to use Dragon Dance to set up. Will it pay off though? He has been knocked down to 8%. He takes out the Braviary and gains the Moxie boost. However, is taken out by Lycanroc, Acceleroc. As Train just continues to switch. Leading Blissey to faint. However, getting the dual Intimidate off of Marwile. Maybe that's the plan to take as little damage from Lycanroc as possible. As he Terrasalized into a pure normal type to survive the hit. As Magnazone comes in. Terrasalizes into a pure electric and also survives the ground type drill run move, meaning that Kukweave will be moving forward into the next match. And into our third match with Professor Juniper against Professor Lavington. As Juniper immediately makes the switch to make use of Claydol's Levitate to not get hit by the headlong rush of Ursa Luna. However, Juniper will command her Claydol to just keep using Rapid Spin, a very weak move which is going to allow Professor Lavington to get Ursa Luna up to a plus two attack with Sword Stance. Claydol does come in with the chance to Toxic, which could help in the long run, but it does seem like a bit of a waste. As Juniper continues to switch around her team, but this Ursa Luna is now a mighty threat. Juniper hoping for the flinches, and is now trying to stall out the Ursa Luna by using Roost, but it is not effective at all. But both are brought down, but Juniper has now lost two Pokemon to one of Lavington's. As Sneasler fights Galuk and lands the poison, to then immediately switch into Hisuian Electrode, which will take out both itself and the Golurk. Sneasler is sent back out. And Juniper once again continuing her method of constantly switching. As BM it's also poisoned as Lavington brings out the bed arrow. To be taken out by a waterfall. Once again, the immediate send out into a switch. As the Suing Lilligant comes out. And is knocked down to 20% and missing the Leaf Blade. To then be switched into Sneasler, which has been pretty reliable so far in this battle. Taking out yet another one of Juniper's Pokemon. As she is now brought down to a Karakosta, who will Terrasalize in order to survive the close combat. Going for the Shouse Mouth, that is an interesting idea as Sneasler chooses that chance to fake out and is taken out by Karakosta. Then Lilligant being taken out by an Aquajack. That could have been the biggest blunder of his entire match, but Karakosta will miss the Rock Edge. Or Stone Edge, apologies. However, it will hit the second one, taking out Bear Barrel, leading this to a 1v1. Cleavor will also Terrasalize, surviving the Aquajet and taking out Juniper's Karakosta. And into our final match of Block B, we have Burnett versus Birch. A slacking will immediately miss its first turn, allowing Shuckle an easy round to set up Self Rocks. Burnett then taking the recharge move to send in her Metagross, which then does take in a hefty amount of damage and misses two of its attacks, leading slacking the chance to knock it down to 21% of its health. Metagross getting the boost on its attack, but then chooses to switch into Shuckle, maybe due to its low health. 
Chuckle comes in and sets up Sticky Web. Only for the free turn to send back out Metal Gross to only Fane to Slacking's Outrage. Now Gunnadale comes in and misses. Landing the second hit and takes out the Slacking. And gains the speed boost for the KO. Burnett choosing to not take advantage of that though and switches into a Porygon Z, which will knock down the Dawn Fan to 12%, however will also loot her another Pokemon. Nugget now comes in and takes this to a 4v4. Once again, not choosing to take advantage of the speed boost as Bronzon comes in against Grumpig. Both will status each other, however Grumpig will miss the Thunder Wave. But will land the second time, but is currently suffering from the poison. Brooch, seemingly having no other options, tries to go for another Thunder Wave in case of a potential switch. Same with the Bronzon throwing out another Toxic. Or maybe Burnett was just being a bit cheeky. As Octillery comes out and chooses to go for Ice Beam, despite the fact that it has access to Fire Blast. Octillery also now Toxic. And brought under half. Hydro Bunt comes out but will only knock Bronzon down to 8% leading Toxic to KO the Octillery. Swallow comes out and does take out the Bronzon. However, Naganadel will show Birch how it's done by hitting Swallow with a Fire Blast as Glalie comes in, terrestrializes, and is taken out by another Fire Blast, leaving Burnett to win the match. And there we have our first four quarter finalists, with Oak, Hukui, Lanton, and Burnett moving on ahead. Oak managed to keep Elm from gaining any footing. However, that doesn't quite mean that Elm wasn't to blame for his own loss, as the Professor would keep Pokemon in against poor matchups, like Togekiss. While chaining its flinches was pretty impressive and did help, wasting all of its recovery moves would later be its downfall. However, the biggest blunder in my mind for Professor Elm would be not using Magmortar's Thunderbolt against Gyarados. In all three matches, these two would always come to head, but each time Elm would choose either Toxic or Focus Blast. The only time Elm would call for Thunderbolt was outside of the tournament, when I decided to run the battle once more, but only having Magmortar know the move Thunderbolt. Surprisingly, it would take Gyarados down in one hit, so why Elm never used it within the tournament, I don't know. I guess the Professor just needs a little bit more time in the Art of Battle before attempting this sort of challenge again. In the beginning, I really believed that Crane would advance onto the next round, with his Metachamp taking out most of Kukui's team. However, the momentum that he had built up in the early game would in my mind be lost once his Blissey had been stalled out by Kukui's Snorlax. After that tempo would shift over to Kukui's favour, and the loss would pretty much come to be, especially once Metachamp was taken out of the battle. Other minor mistakes would arise when Marwire was constantly sent out against Braviary, procking its ability, and also the complete lack of using Cradilly within the second half of the battle. But I can say that both professors did make great use of terrestrialization. However, on this occasion, Crane would sadly not advance on to the quarterfinals. Lavington would pretty much dominate his match against Juniper, however the last hurrah of a Karakosta was a sight to see. Once again, both professors would make excellent use of terrestrialization to save their final Pokemon from instant defeat. Burnett and Birch had interesting leads, with both sending out some of their strongest Pokemon. However, Slacking's ability would allow Burnett the chance to easily set up hazards with her Shuckle. But, this would come at the cost of losing her Metagross early on in the battle. Even with this early KO, Burnett would not allow Birch to gain any more ground, taking down the rest of his team with pure strength alone. But Gengar wasn't even needed for this battle, just to show how strong her team was when compared to Professor Birch. Now I hope that everyone's been enjoying the matches so far. If so, please show your support by leaving a like, or by possibly subscribing to the channel, to stay up to date and notified when the next video in this tournament is released. For now though, let's move on to our next match with Professor Magnolia against Professor Sada.
And into our first match of Block C, we have Magnolia versus Professor Sada. As Magnolia immediately takes the switch into a Corviknight, but is put to sleep by Brute Bonnet. Taking down the half with two crunches, the Corviknight just unfortunately cannot wake up to this onslaught of attacks, and it's taken out only in turn 5 of the battle. Eevee comes back in and uses Protect. It's knocked down to low and misses the Toxic. Tries to go for another Protect, but it's really just waiting out what's going to happen, and yes indeed, it will also be taken out by Brute Bonnet. Sada using this chance to switch into her Flutter main as Orbeo comes out and sets up both a Reflect and a Light Screen, which won't save it, but could potentially save some of its teammates. Poltergeist comes in and Shadow Balls. And Terra Blasts will only knock Brute Bonnet down to half health. And while those barriers did seem to do a little bit of work, they just weren't enough as they now fade. Meowth coming in and landing the first KO against Professor Sada. Could then be switching to Pikachu, which is immediately knocked out by one attack as Meowth terrestrializes. But I mean, choose this to set up. That may be some advanced BMing as Professor Sada moves on to the next round. Now moving over to Professor Willow against Professor Toro. Starting off with Melmetal and Iron Hands, Toro switches to gain the immunity from the ground type attack. Melmetal coming in with an Ice Punch, knocking it down to low, switching then into Snorlax. Both sides seem to want to take as little damage from the other as possible. As the Cosmic switches come in, but Melmetal will be taken down by Iron Hands' Drain Punch. With Charizard coming in and taking out Iron Hands. Iron Moth is then in to replace it. Using a Sludge Wage onto a Snorlax and indeed poisoning it. As Iron Valiant is switched in, Snorlax will rest. And now the speed has increased because as you will see, this Snorlax will do nothing but sleep and will weirdly wake up every three turns as Iron Valiant does have access to close combat, but instead will use either Psy Shock or Moonblast. As we'll see a repeat of sleeps and rests into moves that just aren't powerful enough to take down the Snorlax. This working in Willow's favor though, as now Iron Valiant will have a lot less moves to use against other Pokemon, then finally going in for the close combat, taking out Willow Snorlax. As Charizard comes in, the switch comes out into Iron Moth, who will heal out the damage taken by Charizard. Charizard will miss the second Hurricane and be taken down to half by a Sludge Wave, and then KO'd by a crit overheat from Iron Moth. Bear Tick comes out as Iron Moth takes his chance to set up spikes, but it's knocked out by Bear Tick. Iron Fawns comes out and Rock Blasts the Bear Tick down to one third of its health. Close Combat comes in but will not take down Iron Fawns. A Toxic Crow will come in and make those spikes useless. Now down to a 3v2. Iron Valiant with still some Moon Blasts left on its pockets. Takes down Toxic Croak. As Raichu comes in to Rasolides and will be knocked out by a Close Combat leading Toro to win the battle. Heading into Professor Sycamore against Professor Sonia, we see the immediate switch away from Blastoise as Delmite tries to hit it with a Power Whip into a Venusaur. Delmai is now taking this chance to increase its speed, but is not doing that much damage compared to Venusaur's Sludge Bomb, leading Sonya to switch into Galarian Weezing, which takes half and does burn, however can retaliate back by landing a poison onto Sycamore's Charizard. Hydreigon comes in as Charizard takes this chance to heal itself back up to full, but then misses the Hurricane. Gets hit by Draco Media and will be taken out by the poison. Venusaur is sent back out and hit with a Dark Pulse. However, the Venusaur is able to do more damage than the Hydreigon can do to it. 
Despite that, Sycamore still takes the opportunity to switch into Blastoise. Getting hit with a crit Dark Pulse. And still just barely hanging on, Hydreigon will hit Ampharos with a Draco Meteor. Goes in for another one, however that minus 25% to its special attack is coming in. As it then does feign to Ampharos. Bolt switching against Delmice to bring back in Venusaur. It appears that both will use that turn to heal themselves back up to a decent amount of health. Once again, Delmice prioritizes its speed. Continue to heal themselves back up to high health. However, Venusaur will now go on the offensive and use Sludge Bomb. Sonya now remembering that Delmice does have Shagger Claw. However, it is too late as Delmice is taken out by Poison. Well, Ron comes in and could have protected. However, Woes with a Fire Fang, but then hits it with a Crunch and takes out Blastoise. Ampharos comes in. Takes Bolt Run down to half with a Dazzling Gleam, but is taken out by a Thunder Fang of all things. Sycamore sends out a Kangaskhan, leading Sonya to switch into Runagus. Leading to another switch back into the Venusaur, which has been a pain for Sonya to deal with. And while the Earthquakes can do decent damage, it won't be enough. As Venusaur is able to use Giga Drain to gain back some health and take out another Pokemon, but is taken down by Bolt Run's Fire Fang. A full switch comes in, leading into Stonjourner. It survived two Earthquakes and chooses that opportunity to speed boost, but only takes Kangaskhan down to 7% with a Body Press, leading it to faint to Kangaskhan. Bolt Run, also knocked down to 7%, is able to take out Kangaskhan. Lucario terrasalizes and uses extreme speed as it now becomes a 1v1. Glaring Weezing is burned, but terrasalizes. And Lucario just cannot do enough damage to it as it is taken down by a strange stream. Heading into our final match for the qualifiers into the quarterfinals, we have Professor Rowan versus Professor Neroli, which is already off to a bad start for the Pokemon of Professor Sleep. As Scoville misses, the Leech Seed and Snorlax is taken down by Gallade after being switched in. Scoville comes back out, but it's also taken out by Gallade after spamming Protect. Alakazam comes in to hopefully try and clean up this mess but is taken down by one Leaf Blade from Rowan's Gallade. Camella comes out as Rowan switches into Wormadam. Camella spans Rapid Spin. Not handy against the Steel-type who lands a crit Iron Head against Camella. However, a crit Shadow Claw does come out, but it's not enough as both sides switch. They're only bringing in his Ampharos and Rowan bringing in the Snorlax. Ampharos is able to land a crit though, taking out Rowan Snorlax. As both sides once again bring out new Pokemon, Gallade returning to the battle and Camilla fainting to Gallade as well. Wigglytuff comes out and tries to use Hyper Voice, throws out a wish but is then toxic by Wormadam. Rowan potentially predicting the switch goes for double toxic, now also leading Ampharos to be poisoned and then setting up with a Stealth Rock. Leafeon is brought out after many switches, throws out a wish, and is crit but sent down to only 1 HP. Romadam comes back out as Ampharos goes for the Volt Switch into Wigglytuff. The wish procs bringing Wormadam back up to more than half its health. Ampharos lands a static on Wormadam, but at this point Wormadam just decides to protect as Toxic will take out Ampharos. Wigglytuff terrasalizes, but cannot do enough damage to Wormadam. Wigglytuff chooses now to set up Stealth Rocks, but I think it might be late for Professor Neroli to be trying those strats, as Wormadam can once again just Toxic Stool Rowan into victory. We cannot move ahead without bringing up the absolute slaughtering of Professor Magnolia. Not having access to items did hinder members of the team, such as the Pikachu not holding a light ball. But that being said, if Sada had access to items as well, then I don't think Magnolia would have even achieved a single KO. 
Professor Sada didn't even need to make use of Sliver Wing's access to Sunny Day so that her team could use their Protosynthesis ability. I thought that the Willow against Toro battle would be a complete wash against the Pokemon Go Professor. However, it would end up being a pretty decent fight. Even though Professor Toro also decided to go without using Electric Terrain for his team's benefit, I think that Willow's defeat simply came down to an unfortunate placement within the ladder, as if he was placed against anyone else, he could have gone much further. Sycamore vs Sonya was probably the closest match out of any other Professor battle we've seen so far, as across all three matches it would always come down to a 1v1, but would make mistakes throughout their battles, and on this occasion, Sycamore would make a few more than Professor Sonya. Hopefully Sonya will take what she's learned from this battle to bear her chances in her next match. Finally, as for Rowan vs Neroli, I believe that once again, we unfortunately see another case of a Professor being put within a pretty bad matchup within the ladder, as using mostly normal types, any fighting types that would come up as his opponent would leave Neroli in a bit of a pickle if his Alakazam couldn't eliminate them. And unfortunately, Rowan's Gallade proved to be a pretty great counter to Neroli's team, letting Rowan move on ahead. And with that, we have our eight quarterfinalists. Professor Roke will be taking on Professor Kukui. Professor Laverton will be going up against Professor Burnett. Professor Sada and Toro will be coming face to face. And Professor Sonia and Rowan will battle it out for our final spot into the semi-finals. So join me next week as we continue to find out who is the strongest professor in the Pokemon franchise. Thanks again to Snipu and PTM for giving me help and advice when it came to getting the AI set up. And one final thanks goes out to you for watching, liking and subscribing. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed the show.